Let's fast forward to 1994, November, as it were. I had already met my dear beloved wife, but she was not my wife at the time. She wasn't my wife when I met her. Do you believe that? No. Okay. And of course, we're going out and uh, we're talking about marriage. <laughs> check, check. We're talking about marriage and whatnot. And so, I thought, um, this is a good thing. I'm going to get married. And I, I work for this great company and I'll be a manager there and everything. And I came home from work one day and there was a call on my answer machine. And it was from the, my pastor, who was also the district superintendent over this particular church, Pope Chapel Hawthorne. And uh, I hit the button and he said, Georgie, this is so-and-so, I, uh, I need to talk to you about something. Uh, come into my office or this time or whatever. And I heard that message. And then after I heard it, I said to myself, Hope Chapel Hawthorne. He's going to ask me to pastor Hope Chapel Hawthorne. Because prior to that, God was speaking to my heart about this city that I wanted out of with everything in my soul. But he started putting the love in my heart for the people of this community. And so I called my fiance. And I said, um, I have to go see Pastor Zach. And he's going to ask me to pastor Hope Chapel. Hope Chapel Hawthorne. What do I do? What do I do? I know as soon as I go into his office, he's going to ask me to pastor Hope Chapel Hawthorne. And then she said, what do you mean, what are you going to do? All you do is talk about that little church behind the hardware store and how you're going to be the pastor there someday. And uh, she said, if, if he asks you, you're going to take it. And I said, is it okay? She said, honey, baby, of course. Where you go, I will go. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. In so many words, you know, it's basically what she said. And so I went to his office that day, and he said, Georgie, do you know why you're here? And I said, is it anything about Hope Chapel Hoffman? And he realized at that moment that God was moving. Amen. And so, November of 1994, I came here as a co-pastor. And... Uh, the church had gone through just a lot of sorrow, and uh, there were just a few people here, basically, right? I think we counted probably about 20, 25 people max. And so I accepted the pastorate, served for six months, and then after six months, we had 11 people. Hallelujah! <laughs> and those 11 people stayed and were faithful and basically said, we believe that, that God's called you here. And little by little, God brought other people. God called other people. And the reason why we exist 14 years later is because God has graciously moved in your lives and brought you here and, and knitted your hearts here. And the rest of it is history. That's all I'll say, but I do have a few scriptures to go over with you quickly, okay? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 as we talk about calling. I'm going to give you seven quick things. Say quick. <laughs> seven quick things that communicate God's call. I shared about my call. I want to share about calling in general. There aren't any notes, so jot these down anywhere you want. Take them home. It is homework. Number one, put number one somewhere, even if it's on your hand, or the back of your bulletin, or the calendar, or your, your neighbor's Bible, whatever you want to do. Number one, we are called to be holy. 
we are called to be holy. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 says, To the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, and called to be holy, with all those everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So you may say, what does it mean to be holy? You know, we've heard that word most of our lives. Basically, it's this, to be set apart. You are called to be set apart. If I had time to do this illustration, I'd have about five of you stand and, one, and put one person in the middle, and then I would call that person's name, and it would be up to that person to come out from among those people and to be separate, because that's what holy means. We are called out of this world. You know, sometimes you cannot tell a Christian from a non-Christian. You can't tell a believer from a non-believer. When you are called, you are called out of that worldly system. You're still, you still live in the world. You still live in the world, but you're no longer of the world. You're called out because God has something different for you. Number one, we're called to be holy, called to be separated from what the world uh, is involved with. Number two, we're called to fellowship, or let me say this, called into fellowship with Christ. Look at verse three of the same chapter. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of His grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in Him you have been enriched. Say enriched. In every way. In all your speaking and in all your knowledge. Because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait uh, for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end. He will keep you strong to the end. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of Christ, of the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God who has called you into what? Fellowship. Fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. So not only are we called to be holy, we're called to come out from the world, we're called to have fellowship, relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, on that spring day in 1982, I was called to have fellowship. He called my name and said, I want you. He said, Carolyn, I want you. He said, Rudy, I want you. He called you into a relationship with himself. Isn't, that, isn't it cool when somebody calls your name? Now, I don't usually say this, but take out your cell phone. I know you're not, nobody has a cell phone here at church, right? Okay. Take out your cell phone. I'll give you two, two minutes to do that. Okay. You ever been at a concert when all the lights are out and they say, put your cell phones up? That's what they do now. See, when I was a kid, it was a big lighter. Right? Yeah. Brrrring. Put it to your ear. Hello? Steve? Yeah. No, this is God talking. <laughs> I have called you into fellowship with my son, Jesus Christ. You want that offer? That's all you have to do. Respond. Respond. Do you remember when you first got your, when you got your very first cell phone and somebody called you the first time? Wasn't that so cool? <laughs> somebody is calling me. God is calling your name. He's calling you to be holy, to be separate. He's calling you into fellowship, to have a relationship with Him, with His Son, Jesus Christ. Number three, you and I are called to serve. Jot down Romans 1.1 1, 1, and I'll read it to you. Romans 1.1. 1, 1. This is the Apostle Paul and he says this. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. See, God called His name. Called to be an apostle. And set apart for what? For the gospel of God. I know when I came to this church, he called me to serve this church. The, the first church that I was a part of, he called me to serve there. He's called you to serve here. And to utilize whatever gift, whatever talent, whatever it is. Maybe you like bringing things. Maybe you like 
offering some many 